We are back on WGN TV Political Report. So the criminal reform bill has a lot of support. It passed, but not everybody is for it. My next guest was an assistant state's attorney here in Cook County for nearly two decades. He now serves as a Republican state senator to Chicago's western suburbs, including parts of Downers Grove, Willowbrook, LaGrange. Senator John Curran, welcome to the show, Senator. Good to see you again. Oh, very nice to be with you. So, obviously, a lot of support for this bill goes through. You are not for it. The, the bill, they say, uh, addresses a lot of issues uh, impacting the poor, people of color who have long gotten the short end of the stick in our system. Why are you against it? Well, Paul, it's a 764 page bill. It, there is a lot in this, and, and I don't dispute that there are. Uh, there are components of this bill that are good, that are uh, necessary reforms, um, you know, that needed to go into effect. But however, there are very problematic portions of this bill as well. The most problematic portion of this bill that passed is the changes to the use of force standard that police officers must follow. We, they have now changed the use of force standard in such a way that it's impractical and impossible for officers to actually apply it. Uh, in uh, performing their duties. Uh, if you want a quick example of this. Well, let me let me just just for clarification, if you're talking about what I think you are, it's that provision that basically says that the law, the law officer has to be certain that they're not going to be able to capture that individual if they're going to use deadly force. Yes. Very so, problem. That, that defeats. I mean, that that is never the situation. W when is it? W when would an officer ever have a reasonable belief? that they cannot reacquire a person at a later date. That, that's impractical in application. Although Therefore, actually, it's actually, if you want to argue that, I won't disagree with you because it works both ways, right? An officer can always say, I didn't think we'd ever catch this guy again. Based upon what, Paul? He has to have a, re he has to have a reasonable belief. I mean, the officer has to have a basis for that, um, for that assertion. Yeah. What, 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 would the, what would the basis be for the officer pulling up at the scene to have any sort of knowledge or information about reacquiring an individual at a later date? I, I, I disagree with that, that it would cut both ways. Okay. Um, so when when, when just, you're talking about um, a situation at a school, uh, an active school shooter, officers respond, they can, they can confront that individual with deadly force. However, if, if that, that, that shooter stops and, and slips out the door, slips out the window, that the officers at that point in time have to just let that person go and can no longer confront them. This is going to allow intermittent violence and killings on flight throughout communities. That is not, we have, we have worked hard on uh, fortifying, uh, you know, very high target areas and, and this cuts the yeah. other way. It's very problematic. So I'm curious, uh, related to that then, a lot of police groups said that this bill was just rammed through. Um, the people who worked on the bill said, no, we work very closely with Kwame Raul, make sure everything is, is, is a proper process and all of that. What is, your, is part of the issue here? That, is it your sense that it did get rushed through? It, Paul, it did get rushed through. I was there. This bill was dropped on us on the Republican side at 3.04 a.m. on the floor. We were given one hour to review 764 pages, and it was called for a vote at 4.04 a.m. Now, I will, I will compliment the attorney general. The attorney general's portion, he had a separate bill on police certification that was at, at the version at 3 in the morning was dropped into this bill. However, the attorney general's portion does not have these language concerns or issues in it because the attorney general actually went through a process where he had stakeholders at the table going over specific language back and forth in multiple sessions. That is not what occurred with the remainder of this mm. bill. If they had followed the attorney general's lead on process, we would not be here at this point in time with some very troubling language in application. So I compliment the attorney general. His portion of this was done the right way. Whether you agree or disagree with the policy, there is not a problem with the language and interpretation because he worked it. That was not the case with the rest of this bill. Now, you did say there are parts of the bill you do like. So I'm guessing that pieces like being able to make three phone calls, having to provide aid to somebody who has been injured, maybe even the cash bail provision. Are you OK with all of those other provisions? I understand you have real problems with, with the deadly force. But what about the other provisions that we talk about? Well, you know, I'm I'm in favor of cash uh, uh, of doing away with cash bail, but you have to replace it with with a system that does not jeopardize safety. This bill, it depends on how it's interpreted because it contradicts on the cash bail portion. 
I, and I'll tell you real very quickly on page 336 and 337, it has standards uh, on detention that do not recognize um, someone being a danger to the community as a standard or basis for for a judge detaining them. In fact, every subsequent judge a legal, a court appearance, the judge's standard is specific, real, and present threat to any person or of willful flight pr from prosecution to continued detention of the defendant. Community stand yeah. standard that they advertise is not in there. Further, when it, when it comes to detaining an individual on a gun charge, the standard here is separate from the rest of the bill, yeah. poses real and present threat to the physical safety and any specifically identifiable person or persons. It does not have the community standard there as well. All right. Well, Senator, I, we're, we're out of time now, but I'm sure we'll continue this dialogue. We'll see if the governor signs it, uh, and perhaps maybe some other changes can be made to it down the line. Senator John Curran, thanks for your time, sir. Appreciate the input. Paul, thank you. All right.